Hi. An update on megapixels is uh, long overdue. If I browse through the history of my YouTube channel, my last update video has been two years ago. Quite a lot has happened in the meantime. Um, the main one being that I uh, started rewriting a lot of megapixels into what is now known as the Megapixels 2 codebase. I did uh, write uh, quite a bit of blog posts in the meantime. Uh, showing the progress of megapixels and here's the initial announcement of the megapixels 2 codebase and the goal of it is what is shown here in the header picture it is the same application running on multiple devices and this was also the original intention of megapixels 1 but it all actually only runs on the pine phone and it does run on the Librem 5, but that is a 4 called millipixels. It also technically runs on the PinePhone Pro, and that is a, a 4 called megapixels, because confusingly, the fork has not been renamed. Um, the goal of megapixels 2 is to unify these code bases and make something that actually can run on all phones. The main way it accomplishes this is by uh, rewriting the way it is configured. Megapixels used to have uh, any file as config and it's pretty simple. It, you specify which sensor exists, what name it has, and then Megapixels will open the camera and do camera things. This worked great on the Pine phone because it is a fairly simple device. The sensor just does everything and you connect to it and you get frames. For other devices, you actually have to set up the media graph properly. And I tried hacking that into the Megapixels 1 codebase and into the any config file format. And it does somewhat work, but it is just not great. So I started from scratch with a new config file format. And instead of using the, the any.h uh, tiny any file parser, this is based on libconfig, so I can have hierarchy. This hierarchy is used to uh, make it way easier to configure the complexity of the other phones. But it starts pretty simple. You still have the rear uh, node, and below here is the front node. This is the same as the old ini headers. And the first level of the hierarchy here is basically describing the same data as what used to be in the ini file. And this is just the per camera information but with megapixels 2 there's multiple modes supported and for that another hierarchy of modes is added um, the old megapixels codebase did have support for two modes because it had the separate preview and uh, shooting mode and for that just the whole set of text for that is duplicated with a prefix added and it works but it is just not very nice to edit and for making this all work i had to add another level of hierarchy for actually setting up the pipeline and to do that in in the file would just be an incredible mess but this is not a megapixel supporting tutorial so let's not go into all the fine details of the config file format. Um, just changing the config file is not something that warrants a full uh, new major version of megapixels. But what I also changed is the internal architecture of how everything fits together. I split up the code base from uh, just being the megapixels code base to uh, lib megapixels, lib dng, and the main megapixels code base and this was not really meant to make uh, things like lib megapixels reusable um, libdng is definitely made to be uh, reusable in any camera application but lib megapixels basically exists so there is a boundary between the camera configuration and all the gtk stuff and that is enforced by actually not being able to cross it because it's a library. Um, lib megapixels is actually the part that reads the config files that are in the new format. 
and it has the task of parsing that and applying everything defined in the pipelines there. And to make pixels, it just exposes a list of cameras that are available and the modes that it knows how to configure. And the only thing that LibMegaPixels actually touches is the slash dev slash media and then a number device. It does open the camera devices for the application and then just passes the handles to it. It does not actually interact with any of the video frames at all. It is purely a camera setup configuration library. Since this is now a library, it also includes a few utilities in the LibMegaPixels repository. This is uh, things like um, GetFrame, which is the absolute bare minimum video filmix implementation using LibMegaPixels to open a camera, set a mode and grab one or more frames and then dumping the raw data to a file. This is mainly used for debugging the config files. There's also the find config utility. The purpose of this is to run on the device and run all the auto detection code of the megapixels to figure out which device it's currently running on and find the config file for it, parse it and give you a human readable list of all the detected sensors and modes on it. This is great for debugging if it actually finds the correct video for Linux nodes uh, related to the current sensor. The second thing I quickly split off from Megapixels is libdingg. This is basically the code from the original Megapixels application that interfaced with libtiff to generate the dingg files. Um, actually using libtiff to make dingg files has been quite a nightmare because tiff supports a massive amount of things. Um, dingg adds even more on top of that and libdingg seems to change how to generate those things in minor releases. It is quite painful to deal with and it is the reason why there is some compile flags in megapixels to make a proper binding with the version of libtiff that is in the distribution it's been compiled for. Um, to isolate this from megapixels I made libdingg which can run that piece of code without needing anything graphical or camera related. So there can be tests in the packaging step of distributions to make sure that uh, the combination of libgng and libtiff they currently ship actually produces valid results and not a stack fault. Another feature of libgng is that it removes all the flexibility of generating TIFF files. So whatever you do, you get a valid and compliant uh, DNG file out of it. Uh, Adobe has conveniently released a DNG validator that can be used to run against a DNG file and it tells you all the issues with it. This technically can run on Linux, but it is quite horrific to get to compile. And uh, due to licensing and all the Adobe stuff around it, it's not really possible to ship the validation uh, utility in any distributions of inc or include it into my code base. Instead, I have a separate unit test and integration test script in libgng that can run if you have the dingg validate utility installed and it will uh, generate a bunch of uh, dingg files with various options and run the validator against it to check if you actually still generate valid dingg files. And by proxy, this should guarantee that if you use libgng to generate the files, your output is also valid. To actually standalone test this library, I also wrote a few utilities into it. So libdingg ships with the makedingg and the dingg merge utility. The makedingg utility is a tool that takes in raw sensor data and a few bits of metadata you specify on the command line and it spits out a valid dingg file. And this is also the utility used by all the, the integration tests to make sure that everything that is generated is actually valid. And the DNG merge utility is a more specialty tool. It allows to merge the metadata from one DNG file into uh, the image data from another DNG file. 
And this is specifically to merge uh, camera calibration metadata from DCP files into uh, new DNG files. And DCP files are basically invalid DNG files because they only have the metadata and no image data whatsoever. This is also the file shipped by LipMegapixels with camera calibration curves for supported cameras. But enough about the libraries. The actual Megapixels 2 application, it's uh, still in development. It's uh, progressing nicely and I hope that soon it will be uh, ready for general use. There's a lot of things that has happened in the code base to make all the splitting off into libraries work correctly and make all the interfaces more generic than the original Pinephone code. And this uh, includes dealing with uh, not only the 8-bit formats, but also higher bit depths from other sensors, other pixel packings from MIPI uh, connected sensors. And of course, the automatic white balance, automatic exposure and autofocus. These three uh, things together are uh, called the AAA uh, algorithms. And these have been quite difficult to get working. The easiest is the auto exposure. And that is the one I worked on first. It basically involves taking the average brightness of uh, a frame and then deciding if the image should be brighter or darker and then sending a, a config to the sensor to either change the, the gain or the shutter speed. And well, yeah, this works decently. Um, and the one that takes up a lot of time to get right uh, right now is auto white balance. Because colors are hard and calibrations are hard and there's a lot of circular dependencies in getting this all working. Here's a video of uh, one of the first pieces of auto white balance that actually worked. Um, in this video also the frame rate for the sensor is really low, which is a completely unrelated bug, but it made debugging the white balance a bit harder. And uh, yeah, it does not work great. I got stuck on implementing all of this for quite a bit and it's also a lot harder when the rest of the application keeps crashing around whatever changes you're making. But uh, I'm happy that um, I got more contributors that stepped up to work on the Megapixels 2 code base. Um, in this case it's Chris that helped with making the application crashed a bit less, fixed the bit depth issues on the Pinephone Pro and fixed up a few things that make the auto white balance code actually work decently on the Pinephone Pro at least. So here I have a demo of the Pinephone Pro running my current development code of uh, Megapixels 2. And as you can see, it is pretty smooth. It is actually running the auto white balance code here, but with a wrong calibration. So it's still slightly green tinted, but it's always exactly the same green tint. So that's an improvement. Um, I don't have a post processor actually installed here for development, so I cannot show you the picture output, but it does run. Another thing here is video recording with this button, thanks to uh, Pavel Maciek. Um, this also is quite broken in my development version and it does not actually process the video because I'm missing the tools. Also, I can swap to the front camera that should work. It should, oh, it's very dark because the exposure. Yeah, the background is not lit up, so it has to set the sensor very slow for this, but it does work. That's basically all the tech demos of uh, Megapixels 2. It is very hard to demo something that only mostly works and still very much in development and is made about visual things and doesn't show the visual things properly yet. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that still needs to be fixed up before there can be uh, a true 2.0 release of Megapixels, like uh, fixing up the autofocus that currently does not exist at all. Uh, white balance needs to be improved, calibration stuff needs to be improved, um, the video recording scripts need to be improved, the, it needs to be tested on a bunch more phones because the auto exposure algorithm that runs fine on the Librem 5 and the 
the PinePhone Pro does not really work that great when run on the PinePhone, which is not a problem because the sensor can do it itself, but doing it in software gives a bit more control over the final exposure. And uh, the original PinePhone has a tendency to overexpose pictures quite a bit. Hopefully in a few weeks there will be uh, another update post with an actual public release version, but I wanted to give uh, this update video on what has been happening behind the scenes in the meantime. Um, that's it, I guess. Feel free to drop by the Git repository at the link I will put somewhere down in the description, I guess. Um, getting all this stuff to work and building all the camera stuff for the PinePhone uh, and now also the Librem 5 and the PinePhone Pro and I'm in the process of making it work for even more phones because I have a Pixel 3 here that someone made work on Megapixels 1 so it should be possible to port over to Megapixels 2 and I have a draw for all phones some will probably work it takes an awful lot of time though so if uh, anyone does not want to contribute with patches then I will be very happy if you could contribute with uh, Patreon or LibraPay. It's practically the only compensation I get for building everything basically that I have been building for the phone ecosystem in the last six years. So uh, yeah I would appreciate that a lot. Um, thanks for watching the video and uh, goodbye.